Well, before they knew uh, anything about weather patterns, airplanes would fly from east to west and west to east at the same speed to get to their destination. But those who were flying from west to east would often get there much earlier than if they were flying from east to west. Why was that? Well, it had to do with the air currents. And from west to east, the currents are blowing that way. And um, so those who would be flying from west to east, they would be in what is called the jet stream. Those who are flying from east to west would fly against the jet stream. Well, uh, we have a jet stream as well. The Bible talks about us as believers having a jet stream that will enable us to live beyond our struggles and our, you know, the things that we see kind of like a chore when it comes to the Christian life. And I think, sadly, many believers are kind of stuck in that grinding it out, grinding out the Christian life on their own or in their own energy, in their own flesh. Well, again, the Bible speaks of a, a I, I would call it a jet stream. Let me mention a couple of passages. First is Galatians 5.16 which says, um, but I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. So the jet stream is really the Spirit that enables us to really live above the, uh, the inhibitions and struggles and, and uh, strongholds, we might say, spiritual strongholds that often hold us back. Now, how do we do that? How do we kind of step into that jet stream? Well, Ephesians 5.18 uh, says it well. It says, don't be drunk uh, with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So the way we kind of step into our jet stream is, is kind of align ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit lives in us. We know that. But the Holy Spirit doesn't always possess us or control us. And what this passage is talking about is how to be possessed by the Holy Spirit in a positive way, unlike being possessed by a demonic force. Uh, but this is in a positive way, being possessed and controlled by the Holy Spirit to enable us to, um, again, live above some of our struggles and, and um, uh, strongholds. It's, you know, this passage let me, speaks of, kind of compares the, you know, a believer being filled by the Spirit with someone who's kind of possessed by alcohol. And one of the, in a positive sense, it gives us a contrast that uh, unlike the, uh, the person who is controlled by alcohol, who acts kind of, he's, he's able to step outside of his inhibitions and he kind of, he's he acts in a way that's uncharacteristic to him. For example, someone who might be meek and quiet uh, under the influence of alcohol might be boisterous and abrasive and outspoken and things of that nature. Well, this speaks in a positive sense that the Spirit of God enables us as we kind of step into that jet stream, it enables us and carries us uh, beyond and above our spiritual inhibitions, our sins, and again, uh, many emotional uh, strongholds. So let's take a look at that passage just briefly. You know, I think there are four or five things that kind of stand out about this passage that will help us to kind of step into that jet stream. Number one, it's a passive voice in the Greek text. You hear me use the Greek, speak of the Greek text often. What it means is that an outside, passive voice means an outside agent is acting upon the subject. So in this case, it is saying, allow the Holy Spirit to act upon you, to take control of you. Speaking of, of people who drink or who go out to drink, oftentimes those who go out to drink as a group will say, we're going to have a designated driver. And basically they're yielding, you know, the will to this designated driver. Well, in a positive sense, we're yielding the, you know, the will, the, you know, the, the will of the car, so to speak, of our lives to the Holy Spirit. So first, it's, uh, he, we must yield up to him. We must relinquish control of our lives. And that's an ongoing struggle, and, and it takes you know, years of really doing that over and over again. But secondly, the, we want, what we want to note about it is that it is a command. In order to be pleasing to God, 
we must attempt or see how or make adjustments to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. We need to step into that jet stream, so to speak. Thirdly, it's a plural command. In other words, it's not speaking just to one person. It's speaking to all. It's telling every believer. So it doesn't matter who you are. You know, there are no elite believers. And so this is saying to all, you're to be filled or controlled, or you're to step into that jet stream, so to speak, so the Spirit can kind of carry you. Uh, and then the fourth thing is it's a present tense which means that I am to be filled on a continuous basis. You know, you don't eat a big Sunday dinner and expect to live on that the rest of the week. Well, you have to be continuously filled by the Holy Spirit. There are things that happen to us that cause us to act out of character, to take back control of our lives, and thus we need to constantly be sure that we are being filled by the Spirit. And then, as I said before, um, this is compared to someone who's being drunk uh, in a positive sense. So when you put off all these things, when you allow the Spirit of God to control you, God can work through you in a way that is so different. And, and, and it takes faith in believing that. So let's put it all together. We are to be constantly filled by the Holy Spirit. That means we've got to, day by day, be sure that we're making the proper adjustments. It's what we call spiritual breathing. So how do we do that? Well, we say you can make sure there's no sin in your life. You confess it. And, and secondly, you yield control to the Holy Spirit. And then thirdly, you have to believe that the Holy Spirit will control you, wants to control you, and if you'll just allow him, he will. And you, when you begin to step, walk, live the Christian life in faith, I'm going to believe. Once I've done that, once I've confessed my sin, I've yielded, okay, Lord, I'm giving this my life back to you. I want you to live your life through me. Then once you've done that, then you start living by faith. Say, I'm trusting God to do that. And I can guarantee you that when you do that, you'll begin to see things differently. Things will begin, you'll begin to see things happen in and through you and around you that you didn't expect. I, I can promise you that if you genuinely put to practice this, this verse. So I want to encourage you in this time, it's a difficult time, uh, so much going on. And um, it's so easy too to get in the flash during this time to, to let the old nature control us. But we need all of us as believers, uh, we need to be uh, people who are different uh, who walk to the beat of a different drum. And the only way we can do that is, is by the Spirit controlling us. In other words, by our stepping into that jet stream of the Spirit. So, uh, church, uh, keep on keeping on. And uh, we're going to get through all of this. And, um, but, but, but the way to get through it is with the Spirit and, and His power. So let me pray with you. Father, we uh, need Your Spirit every day. There's so many things that distract us, that cause us to step out of fellowship with you and, and step out of that jet stream that you have provided for us. And I just pray that you would uh, enable each person from Mountain View to really step into that jet stream and experience in a real way, in a personal way, what that can mean to them. And so, Father, again, we're so thankful that we can come to you. We're so thankful that we have a mighty God. And we're so thankful that this God listens and hears us. And when we come to you, in true, in, in, in true contrition, confess our sins, and then um, yield our lives to you and, and walk by faith, you will answer us, Lord, and respond to us. So thank you again for your promises and provisions for us in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.